Hey everybody, welcome back to our journey through the Bible. I I want to turn our attention away from the Gospel of John in which we've spent the last uh, three or so reflections, and I want to go back to the second part of the story of the temple that we began a few weeks back in fir that takes place here in both First and Second Chronicles. For those of you who are here regularly, you may recall that a few weeks ago, we talked about David and his desire to, to build a temple for God in Jerusalem, and then God's revelation that he had a different plan in store. That story was not only the basis of our reflections for that day, but became the foundation of my sermon the following Sunday, that notion of our saying yes to God's no. Since that time, as we've moved from 1 Chronicles into 2 Chronicles, we've now come through the period of the end of David's reign, reign, and we're reading now of the reign of Solomon, who is the one who's given that honor of building the temple. So the temple is constructed, Solomon moves the Ark of the Covenant into the temple, and then in chapter 6, we read David's prayer of dedication of the temple. And then it's right upon the conclusion of that prayer of dedication that we come across an entry of sorts of God into the temple. And that's what we read of in the first three verses of the seventh chapter of Second Chronicles. It says that when Solomon had ended his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. And when all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down on the pavement with their faces to the ground and they worshipped and they gave thanks to the Lord saying, For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I think this, this notion of the building and the having of this temple is, is it's somewhat foreign to our 21st century American Christian mindset. We're not entirely attuned to the role and the nature of the temple in the lives of the people of God. And, and that's why our contemporary reflection on these stories can really take us in a lot of different directions with the temple. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, the the story took us in that direction of our reaction to those moments in which God's plans differ from our own. I also, I think there's a very common and appropriate consideration that stems from, from these temple stories that asks us what we're doing to have a place to, to make room for God in our lives. As David wanted to build that temple as a house for God, and as Sol Solomon finally did, what are we doing to thoughtfully and intentionally make a place for God in our lives? I, I think those are all valid things to consider, but I think this, this particular moment in the story as we read of, of God's entry into the temple, it serves as, as a reminder of a slightly different question that I think it poses for our 21st century lives of faith. When all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed on the pavement with their faces to the ground and they worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. It's... It's important and right to consider the role of the temple as, as an aspect of worship to God, giving a place to God, creating for God and, and an ornate dwelling worthy of God's presence, making God that architectural centerpiece of the community. These are all acts of faith that were grounded in a sense of worship and praise. The, the flip side of the presence of the temple, however, was its constant reminder of this moment of which we read in 2 Chronicles 7. Drawn to create the temple as an act of worship, 
the people encounter this moment in which God enters that temple with such glory that they can't help but see it then as a constant reminder that God is there. And that, I think, is something that's worthy of our thought. It's important to, to ask where we're making room for the presence of God in our lives. I think it's also important, however, to ask what we have created in our lives that draws our focus back to that presence that's there. The temple served two purposes in Jerusalem, sure. It served a purpose as the center of the worship and praise of God. It also served, however, as the physical embodiment of God's presence that constantly drew their attention back to the promises of God's enduring and steadfast love. It's it's important to ask where we are making room for the presence of God in our lives. I think it's also important, however, to, to ask what we have created in our lives that draws our focus back to that presence that's there. What practices do you have that recenter your focus on God's purposes in your life? What what people or places do you encounter that draw your mind back to the presence of God in your everyday? What do you have that serves as your temple? That which simply forces your attention back to the love that carries you. Or perhaps even more importantly, what might you create to serve that purpose that you don't have now? You know, at each of these devotionals that we share, you all see over, over my shoulder here my collection of crosses that hangs on the wall behind my desk. The history and the basis of that collection is a, is a topic for another time and another place. But I will say that just as you see them every time over my shoulder, they are the very first thing I see every time I walk through the door and into this office. They are a small, subtle, but very meaningful reminder that draws my attention back to what this whole thing is about. What do you have that serves that purpose in your life? It, it may be as simple as a figure sitting on a shelf somewhere. It may be a study group of which you are a part. It may be a daily routine of prayer or reading. It may be any of a thousand things, and it really needs to be more than just one of them. But as much as it's worth asking ourselves where we are making room for God... I think it's equally as important to ask ourselves what temples we've created in our lives that serve that essential purpose. That essential purpose of drawing our attention back to the presence and the love that's always there. Let's be in prayer together. God of love, draw our hearts back to the wonder of the, your promises. With the glory of your presence filling the temple, fill our hearts with the confidence of your steadfast love and help us, God, to, to find new ways to bring our focus back to you. Not just today and not just tomorrow. But in each and every day as we walk in the ceaseless comfort of your care. For we pray it in his name. Amen. As always, I pray you have a blessed day. I hope you are staying warm and safe if you're surrounded by snow. And I look forward to seeing you again here Thursday at noon. Have a great afternoon.